Hi, I'm Kelly at Book and Paper Arts, and I hope that today you are ready for some altered book eye candy because ta da, I finally finished my latest altered book. And today I have a flip through. And I'm going to show you the pages and also talk about some of the processes that I used in getting these layouts and also uh, the layers. So if you like altered books and art journals and collage, please subscribe to my channel. Let's go. This was started out as an old school book, The Gateway to English Part 3. On it, I did a rough torn background of some sheet music from 1898. And then I added this guy. I really, really like the way he's looking out to something we can't see. And uh, he's from 1881. And I just want you to see, not only does he have really cute hair, his um, soft tie game is on. Here I have made a background using a blue legal document, handwritten, and it is from 1867. And you can see again, they put the signature uh, crosswise back then. Let's see. I knew I wanted to use this letter, but it did not go give me coverage wall to wall. So I wanted something just to cover up that last bit of edge here. And I have these, a lot of these wildflower pages, British wildflowers. So I took one just added enough of an edge to take up that space. And I really like the way that the just the poking out of the little blooms here picks up her roses. Also, she's reading a letter, and this is a letter, so there's something kind of whimsical there as well. And this lady is from a French fashion magazine, 1903. If you like this sort of page and think you could use it in your work, I have some free downloads on my website that you can, you can just gonna go on over there and get them. The link is down below. This is one of my favorite pieces I've ever had. And he's from a French news magazine, 1881, and that was called L'Univers. He is serenading these birds, and they came from an old um, textbook from 1912 that I got at a thrift store. That was a good day. I have put them on top of a background of a handwritten invoice. I just love the way numbers look in that old-timey ink. And this is from 1844. On this page, I wanted to bring a little bit more color into it. So I started off with a background of some tea bags. And you see that when you glue down tea bags, they're pretty translucent. And you can see the, the text underneath, which gives a lot of layer and uh, shabby chic texture. This fragment of a marbled page is from a frontispiece of an old dictionary. And it's unusual to find them in this kind of plummy purple. So I really like that, especially since I was able to find a butterfly with that similar color. And then I just inked up the border of my pocket with another purple. Inside of that, I have an old French postcard and a little bit of writing on there. I didn't want to glue that down, but it does also have some purple flowers. So I thought that went very nicely. This page and several other pages, I've actually made longer videos showing how I made them from, from bottom to top, whole thing. And I will link to those in the text below this video. So if you're curious to find out how several of these layouts got made, there you go. This is a handwritten ledger fragment. I like the way this Madonna is gazing out 
to something that we can't see unless it happens to be this beautiful oversized iris. And why wouldn't she be? Got some mark making here with some plum colored ink. I don't know, I just needed yellow. What can I say? So again, very oversized flower over here and I've added a, a blackbird. This is a lot of look though, and I needed something over here to balance it. And what I did was took another flower that does draw the eye this way, a little bit of an echo of color here. And then I added again, another of those pages of wildflowers. And I just rough tore that asymmetrically and um, put that down and left some text showing. And then again, I have another old postcard. And in this case, I think that the daisies go really well with the, the rest of the floral motif. Here I have made two pockets using old postcards. And I've just glued them down on three edges and left one edge open. And now I can put some vintage paper ephemera in there. The background was made with a stencil and stamp pad. Also a little bit of drizzly ink for some distressed mess. Over here is a little calling card. These were very popular in the early 1900s. And you very carefully lift up this flower and there's the name of the giver underneath there, Maurice Genin. And I have a second card. It's an old Victorian scrap and it says, the oldest monkey always gets the peach. And isn't that so true? I don't know what that means. Over here, I have a, a French holy card from 1903, and it also has some beautiful blossoms and a chalice. This is a different kind of French holy card. It's called a dentelle because of the paper lace around the edge. It's from 1870. And I have free downloads of several of these beautiful black and white and grayscale holy cards. And the text to that is also linked underneath this video. Or let me know if you can't find it. Inside this pocket is an old identity card. It's British. You can see the, the British emblems. And it is from 1947. So it's right after World War II. And I think you needed these for rationing. And I've altered it a little bit as well, adding a, a cheeky little guy. And finally, a beautiful otter and an odd fish. And they are on a, a mis mixed matched background of these fishes from a um, wildlife book from 1867. And then um, these maths tables. And again, if you want to use something like that, I've got some free downloads for you. You know where they are. If you would like to see still photos of this book or maybe even think about buying it, there's a link to that as well. And while you are looking at some of this stuff on my site, if you are kind enough to go there, please subscribe to my online newsletter. It goes out once a month now and it's got art journal stuff and collage stuff and altered books and prompts and giveaways and free scans, a little bit of fashion and the occasional pep talk. Finally, I please leave me a question or some feedback in the comments. Uh, YouTube will like me better if you do. And besides, I'm still in lockdown and I need to hear from the outside world. 
please. Okay, until then, until next Friday, get up and go make something.